Viranu Nega, you're a co-founder of Ginbot7. What is your reaction to the confirmation of blogger Eskender Naga's 18-year jail sentence in Ethiopia? What happened was no surprise at all. Um, this stuff, the, whatever is going on in the Ethiopian court system, is a news to foreigners. Uh, the Ethiopians have stopped expecting anything uh, from the Ethiopian judicial system. You know, nobody expected anything to happen on the basis of evidence. That has stopped a while ago. I mean, the Ethiopian judicial system has stopped making judgments on the basis of what the facts are. They make judgments on the basis of what the government at any particular time wants. You're saying the courts are not independent? Independent is not a term that you'd use to Ethiopian courts. It's a, it's a completely captured, totally useless judicial system. One of uh, the accusations that Eskinder Nega was facing was that he was a member of your organization, that he was a member of Ginbot 7. Was he a member of Ginbot 7? I will tell you without any, any uh, doubt that uh, Skinder has never been a member of Gumbot 7, but that, that has nothing to do with this hearing or with, uh, with his arrest. I mean, he's arrested simply because he was writing, and he was writing things that the government doesn't like, because he was asking for uh, freedom, he was asking for uh, democracy, he was asking for the right of journalists to, to, to speak freely. That in Ethiopia is a crime. That in Ethiopia is what terrorism means. That is the definition of terrorism according to the Ethiopian judicial system. You know, this is not news. This is known. What is surprising is that the West that claims that it is interested in freedom and independence of the judiciary and things of that sort just simply plays this charade. The West has given Eskinder Naga different awards and prizes. The Ethiopian authorities are insensitive to this man's popularity in the West? Of course, insofar as the West keeps giving them the money that they want, the West can say whatever it wants. It doesn't matter. I mean, the real issue and uh, the West can show its true commitment to freedom and democracy by deciding that its resources cannot be used to abuse um, citizens. So far as the money keeps flowing from the European Union, the United States and other countries, then you know, what reason does the, the Ethiopian government have to change? And why is the money still flowing? Is it because the West needs yeah. Ethiopia's support in neighboring Somalia? Yeah, unfortunately, that, that is the, the geostrategic consideration that primarily drives the, the West's foreign policy agenda. And uh, the Ethiopian government, since Mullahs, has been playing rather smartly the, the West's legitimate fight against terrorism as a conduit to suppress and terrorize its own population. That's what's really amazing about this and what, what is sad about this. The, the fight against terrorism is supposedly taking place by a government that is totally terrorizing its own population. In a so, fight against radical terrorism uh, that the West doesn't like, the West is to a certain degree supporting a government that is terrorizing its own population. That is what is sad about this whole affair. And the new Prime Minister, de Saleg, is not fundamentally different from the former Prime Minister, Melis Zanawi? Oh, there is no way that it could be any difference. This is not about individuals. This is a government that continuously claims that it is trying to implement the vision of the, the former dictator. I mean, the, uh, the, you know, in fact, if you look over, over the last um, six, seven months, uh, you know, what has been going on to the, the, uh, the uh, ethnic cleansing of Amharas in the, uh, the Ben Shangul Gums area, the, uh, the, the human rights suppression in Gambella that is taking place, in the Ogaden, uh, things are getting actually significantly worse. Eskinder Nega's lawyer says he's considering an appeal in Ethiopia's highest court, the Court of Cassation, do you think that court may make a different ruling? The problem is not the, the court that made this decision. The, the problem is with the whole system. You know, you can go to the Court of uh, Cassation, you can go to the, the, uh, the first instance court, you can go to the higher court. It doesn't make any difference. You know, the problem, I, you know, I don't know how to explain this. This is not about who the particular judge is. This is not about who is sitting in that bench. This is a judiciary that is so totally captured by the state. In fact, even compared to the Mangustu period, you know, during the Mangustu dictatorship, 
the judicial system, I mean, the, the, the Mengistu and his, his uh, cronies would take extra legal measures by not taking people to court. They never, you know, once you go to court, there was a modicum of independence on the court, and the court would make a decision in its own. The, the Mengistu regime never used the courts as the, the instrument of repression. This is the first time in Ethiopian history where the courts have been totally appropriated as an instrument of repression. That is what is so sad, that the institution is being completely destroyed. You're saying it's so, worse than under Mengistu? In this specific, I'm talking about this specific case. There are many, many areas where this system is worse, but in terms of the use and abuse of the judicial system, as an instrument of repression, this is the worst government that Ethiopia has ever seen. Beranu Nega, thank you for this. You are quite welcome. Thank you.